Lots of really awesome STEM news, you say. Time to science the out of it. Hey guys, welcome back to The Stimulus. I'm Steph Evans, and here's what happened this week in STEM. Our first story of the week takes us to the United Kingdom, where a 60-year-old woman has been the first recipient of an experimental surgery that utilizes stem cells to treat a condition known as age-related macular degeneration, or AMD. AMD is a huge problem. It's responsible for more than 50% of vision problems in the developed world. It typically affects people over the age of 50, and in the United Kingdom, one in four people over the age of 60 suffer from this condition. AMD mainly messes with the center of your field of vision, leaving the edges clear. There are two forms of AMD, wet and dry. Dry AMD is the more common of the two and occurs when retinal cells are too thin. Wet AMD, which is the type that the surgery will treat, occurs when abnormal blood cells leak into the center of the retina. During the surgery, eye cells derived from stem cells were transplanted onto the retina to form the retinal pigment epithelium, or RPE. This layer of cells is responsible for nourishing and supporting photoreceptors in the seeing part of the eye, known as the macula. We won't know if the surgery was completely successful until December, but there have been no complications so far. If everything goes well, 10 more people are scheduled to get this surgery in the next 18 months. If all of those surgeries go well, the stem cell trials will then be sent to a regulatory review board to have their safety and their efficacy evaluated. If this is successful, it will be the first widely used stem cell treatment in the UK and a game changer for people that suffer from AMD. Our next story of the week takes us under the sea, where apparently some things are glowing. This summer, while completing a night dive near the Solomon Islands in search of biofluorescent coral and fish, a group of marine biologists were surprised to find yet another creature glowing in the dark. Researcher David Gruber captured footage of this hawkbill sea turtle glowing red and green in the dark and was shocked. While evidence of biofluorescence had been observed in captive loggerhead turtles, glowing turtles in the wild had never been seen before. Now, biofluorescence differs from bioluminescence, which is when a creature emits its own light by way of chemical reactions, much like what we see in fireflies. Biofluorescence occurs when a creature absorbs light, in this case blue light, and then re-emits it in a different shade, typically reddish or greenish. That was another thing that made this sea turtle notable, the fact that he was emitting both red and green, which is typically not seen at the same time. Gruber suspects that the red may be coming from algae on the turtle's shell, but the green is definitely coming from the shell itself. There are many different reasons why creatures could have biofluorescence, in some cases to attract prey, but in this case, it's thought that the turtles are biofluorescent in order to blend in with the coral that they hang out in. There are still many unanswered questions as to the how or why these turtles are glowing, and unfortunately, it's gonna be really hard to answer those questions. Hawkbill sea turtles are critically endangered, with their population decreasing almost 90% over the last couple of decades. However, Gruber is optimistic that they can obtain some of the answers by studying the loggerhead turtles in captivity. Either way, this is so cool. The closest I've ever come to glowing in the dark was when I broke a glow stick on myself, but that's bioluminescence, so it's not the same as we've just learned. Yeah, science! And now for the moment that you've all been waiting for, move over Pluto, there's another celestial celebrity in the house now. Whether you went to the movies and watched Matt Damon get rescued from yet another planet, or you just pay attention to the news, you know that Mars has been everywhere this week. And last Monday, NASA dropped a huge announcement on us. They have found liquid water flowing on the surface of Mars. Water on Mars, water on Mars, water on Mars. I'm very excited about it in case you couldn't tell. Our scientific story begins back in 2010, when scientists noticed that during the Martian summer, dark streaks would form on crater and canyon walls and grow, and then disappear during the winter. Using the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter's high-rise instrument, scientists mapped where these features, which they named Recurring Slope Linear, or RSLs, appeared. Scientists then used the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter's imaging spectrometer, CRISM, to generate mineral maps of these locations, and what they found was astonishing. They found hydrated salts when the RSLs are at their widest. These hydrated salts pretty much serve as the smoking gun because the most likely way that they got there was by liquid water. So how can water flow in such an extreme environment? Well, the salts are actually the key. This water is very salty and briny, so you wouldn't want to drink it on a hot summer day. Do you hear that? It's the sound of millions of Doctor Who fans breathing a sigh of relief. Well, we know what happens when you drink the water on Mars. The salt drastically lowers the freezing point in the water and raises the boiling point, essentially making it more stable on the surface. If you put regular liquid water on Mars, it would freeze at 0 degrees C and boil at 10 degrees C instead of 100 degrees C like it would here on Earth. This is because the Martian atmosphere is so thin. Just add salt and now the water can remain liquid to negative 70 degrees C or negative 94 degrees Fahrenheit. 
This happens because when you dissolve salt in water, it breaks into ions. Take table salt, sodium chloride. It breaks into sodium and chlorine ions, and when the temperature drops and the water is trying to form a crystalline structure, these ions basically get in the way and keep that from happening. This is why we throw salt on the roads when they get icy during the winter time. So where exactly is this water coming from? Well, there are several theories, one of which involves ice deposits below the surface thawing out and then seeping up through the ground. A different and seemingly more favored theory involves something called deliquescence. Deliquescence occurs when the salts absorb the moisture out of the air, condense it, and eventually dissolve in it, forming the brine. Either way, this discovery has a massive impact on the way we look at Mars, and not just because it gives us a better idea of the Mars hydrologic or water cycle. While this discovery does not confirm life on Mars, it does give us a better idea of where to look for it. And if we can figure out how to make this water usable for humans, then we wouldn't have to carry our own water with us on the missions to Mars in the 2030s, and that's a huge deal. Do you hear that? That's the sound of millions of Doctor Who fans panicking again. So that brings us to our question of the day. What do you think about the discovery of liquid water flowing across the surface of Mars? What has you most excited? Let us know in the comments section down below. As always, if you want to check out any of the stories I covered a little bit more in depth, I'll include links to my sources down below along with links to all of my social media, so check that out in your free time. Guess what guys? T-shirt sales are done. They are over that's it kaput for now but I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for everybody who bought one and to everybody that helped spread the word thank you thank you thank you you guys are amazing shout out to Kina over at Stembox and Sarcastic Grover who helped out big time spreading the word you guys were amazing and I'm so so grateful and now for the drawing if you've been paying attention over the last couple of weeks you know that if you bought a t-shirt and you sent me a proof of purchase whether it was a screen cap of the email or whatever your name was automatically entered in for a chance to win a super awesome custom avatar or profile picture drawn by my very own Rob Cabrera who helps co-produce the show and does all of this super awesome artwork that you see. So now it is time for that drawing. Woo! Into the hat we go. Oh, no, you stand. Ah. <laughs> shake it. Shake it like a Polaroid picture. Uh-huh, shake it. All right, guys. And the winner is I can get it open. And the winner is, drum roll please. I don't know that I have a drum roll sound effect, but anyway. Bones Knapple, Mandy, my buddy from high school, you are the winner of the super awesome custom avatar. So keep an eye out on your Facebook. I will be getting in touch with you shortly. To everybody else that bought a t-shirt, thank you guys so, 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 so much. Every cent from this campaign is going back into making the stimulus more awesome. And I'm so incredibly appreciative for your support. And I can't wait to see how much we can grow this and make it expand. It's just, it's gonna be awesome. And I also can't wait to see you guys start wearing the shirts. I think they're scheduled to start shipping at least the first wave is within the next week or two. And then after that, there will be uh, one more shipment, I think, um, for the last little bit uh, for whoever bought within the last week. So look forward to that. When you get your t-shirt, snap a pic and send it to me on Twitter using the hashtag stimulus selfie and tell me what gets you excited about STEM. I look forward to seeing this, you guys. I'm so excited. Yeah. If STEM is your thing and you wanna see more videos like this, please feel free to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I'm putting out videos every week to talk about the latest and greatest in STEM news. As always, if you find any really cool STEM related news stories throughout the week, please feel free to send them to me on Twitter at at 43 using the hashtag twistem and they just might wind up in next week's episode. But as always, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your week. Stay well, stay awesome, and I will see you next time. Funk you up, uptown funk you up. Say what? <laughs> to utilize the stem cells. Utilize the stem cells to, re to treat, to treat. My ear is plugged. And so it sounds like everything's echoing and it's kind of weird. Stem cells to treat a condition known as age-related macular death. What? Loki, no, degeneration. <gasps> no bark. He, was, he hasn't been barking all day and now, I've got the camera on, now he wants to bark. Can you not? In order to treat a disease, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Sea turtle glowing red and green, and green, green. We're not green, why am I struggling with that? Never been before seen and then that was not just good, that wasn't good, it went nowhere, it went nowhere. Nowhere good, head sea turtles. Glowing like this had never been, blah, 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 blah.
it's thought that the turtle is biofluorescent in order to camouflage itself in the curl that is hanging out and that didn't go well. I don't know why I'm doing this, but whatever. <laughs> Another planet, or you just paid attention to the, no to the nose, also known as news, but you know, nose. <laughs> Hair flip. I am so glamorous. I just don't even know what to do with myself. Occurs when blah, 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 blah. But what? We've said but. We keep running into butts. No butts. No if, ands, or buts. Maybe buts. We don't know. Science!